Let's take a look uh, briefly at the same concept, same idea, worksheets one and two, but now just at the computation, not so much on the theory. So we found out that there is a name for three different ratios. Sine uh, is the name we give opposite to hypotenuse. Cosine is the name we give for the ratio of adjacent to hypotenuse. Tangent is what we give for opposite over adjacent. Those are names like Fred, George, and Michael. They're just names to represent when I say Fred, you know who I'm talking about. When I say sine, you know who I'm talking about. So sometimes uh, teachers use so ka toa as a way to help students remember it. Sine is opposite to hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent to hypotenuse, tangent is opposite to adjacent. Now the real power of trigonometry is that it's the first time we relate angles to sides and sides to angles. Um, the Pythagorean theorem is only about sides of a right triangle. We know that the three angles of a, of a, a triangle add to 180. But we don't know have a way to connect the two of them. Trigonometry is the bridge. And it is a powerful, powerful piece of mathematics that you, is used in all kinds of applications uh, in engineering and lots of other places, physics, because it's the way we connect angle size and measurement. It's beautiful. Um, let me show you kind of how it works here. Um, here are two sides, a three and a six. And uh, we're in a right triangle, and we're, we don't know what angle that is. I know the angle. How would I know the angle? Well, I drew the triangle. No, that's not why. Because there is only one right triangle that has a leg that is half the size of its hypotenuse. That happens in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And this must be the 30 degrees. Now, another way to approach that is not just by memory, but that, that this angle being our reference angle, this would be the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So the sine ratio of some unknown angle is 3 over 6. And I can uh, put that into my calculator. And uh, again, when you find angles, you always use the inverse function. And that inverse function basically takes the ratio and then gives you the angle back. And you're going to find that it comes out to be 30. Now in this case, our angle is up here. This would be our opposite and this would be our adjacent. This is the tangent ratio between these two. And so it would be the tangent of our angle is equal to 10 over 8. Now again, when you find an angle, you always use the inverse. So we would do the tangent, the inverse of that tangent is 10 divided by 8. And whatever that number gives us is the actual angle size. Both of these were about finding angles. I'm interested in finding sides down here. And the idea is that if I'm looking at a 21 degree right triangle, this ratio is fixed. There's a number that has to go there to keep the ratio proper. And so again, this is an opposite and a hypotenuse. So this is the sine of 21 is x over 15. And this is just simply a ratio value. That that is one of those three numbers that's locked in. And I can just basically say that proportion, that ratio, has to equal x to 15 and solve for x. You'll notice to solve, when I cross multiply, I get the sine of 21 times 15. When I multiply those together, I'll get that exact length that's needed to keep that proportion active. Same thing over here. Uh, this is a, uh, here we go, I kept doing sine, unfortunately. Uh, this is opposite and hypotenuse. So again, that's the sine of 72 is 8 over x. Again, I always like to put this over 1 as a way to keep my cross multiplication easy. The sine of 72 times x equals 8. And the answer would be 8 divided by the sine of 72. Now, I'm about to go re-show this one more time for more examples. I'm talking very quickly, uh, but I'll show you a few more examples. But one of the tricks that I, I'll mention, and I'll mention it here as well, is that when you're solving for a side, if x is the side you're solving for in the numerator spot, you'll see you'll always multiply these numbers. 
if x is in the denominator spot when you're going to solve for it, you will always divide those two values. You'll see me do a couple here and, you, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. So again, the whole idea to calculating now is when we're given sides and want to know angles or, or knowing angles given sides, the idea is that trigonometry connects angle size to side length. And this is kind of the first time. The Pythagorean theorem only works as side lengths. So let's take a look here at kind of a question here. It says, finding the angles when knowing the sides. So how can you and I go from knowing these two sides to getting to know that angle? Well, first of all, we understand that all triangles have a ratio of these two sides, and those triangles will all have the same angle in this location. So what we do is we say, well, if this is our reference angle, this would be the opposite and adjacent. That's called the tangent ratio. So the tangent ratio of some angle will be 13 to 34. Now the idea is that there is only one triangle angle that would match that. Now let's just do it as a decimal here for a second just to maybe uh, warm you up to this idea. So 13 divided by 34 comes out to 0 0.382 or something like that. Now let's go back to my table just because I like that so much. And let's go down the tangent column to find 0.382. So uh, here's a pretty close number. So we think the angle should be pretty close to 21. Now, in the old days, we'd find a way to estimate this out, to maybe to, to round it to 21 or whatever. You and I have a modern calculator. And so what we could do to solve this problem, let's see if I can show my work here and show my calculator here. What we do is we kind of, you see how we worked backwards in the table? We, we went from the inside to find the angle. Let's call it, that's the inverse of uh, normally what tangent provides us. So what you do is you hit second and then tangent. You see the tan inverse or tan to the negative one? This is always used, inverse is always used when finding the angle. Because the idea is I have the ratio but I do not have the angle. Now watch, does it give us very close to 21? Yes, it does, 20.92. That's kind of what we expected, wasn't it? Let's do another one here, and we'll use both the table and the other to test it out. So here, this is our adjacent, and this is our hypotenuse. This is a cosine ratio of an angle that I don't know, but 25 over 32. Now again, let's just play the what-if game here for a minute. 25 divided by 32 is 0.7812. Now, if I was using my table, I would go down the cosine column. So, cosine to 0.7, what was it? 78. So, uh, I've got to keep going down, 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 78. Ah, whoa, almost, almost uh, this 38 degrees here. So let's see what our calculator tells us to see if it tells us the same thing. So I'm going to put her down there and slide this up. And again, when you're finding the angle, you hit second cosine for the inverse of 25 divided by 32. And there's, uh, there's our value that we were looking at, uh, very close to the uh, 38 that we were looking at. Now, uh, one other thing, maybe while I have my calculator here, if you're not getting these answers or if you ever start getting into trouble and you're using a graphing calculator, what very well could be happening is that there, there is a different way to measure an angle, and the TI calculators in particular are often set in that manner, and that's why we get a lot of wrong answers for a while. Let's hit the Mode button. Let me just zoom in here for a minute. There are two ways to measure an angle. One is in radians, and the other is in degrees. Make sure you're in degrees. All right. Now, let's, uh, let's do the other kind of calculating, which is to find the length of the side. So now we know the angle, but we want the length of the side. So once again, I need to label things. This would be my opposite. This would be my adjacent. 
These are the two I know, which is the tangent ratio. Tangent of 38 equals the opposite over the adjacent. Now you'll notice that uh, what's missing is the side now and the angle. This, this is a ratio. A tangent of 38 is a fixed ratio. We can actually look that up in our table, or we can uh, simply use our calculator to find it. Now, I typically put this over 1 because then I think about cross-multiplying. The x length will be that ratio times 12. And again, I'll just bring up my calculator here to show you how I would type that in. Um, I would do the tangent of uh, 38 times 18, and it will tell me, oh, 12, sorry, times 12, and it will tell me that that other length had to be about 9, this length up here had to be about 9.38 to create the perfect ratio for this type of angle. Remember, all the ratios are locked in for these. Let me just do one more uh, as a way to get a little bit more practice. Uh, this is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. That sine of 16 degrees is 8 over x. This time, uh, you'll notice that my ratio, my sine ratio, uh, equals 8 over the unknown value of x in the denominator. Why is it there? Because it's the hypotenuse I want to, to learn. So when I cross multiply, I get sine of 16x equals 8. And then to get my answer, I'll take 8 and divide it by the sine of 16. This number here will be my answer to uh, the problem. So I'm going to just take uh, 8 and divide it by the sine of 16. I'll just show you what that looks like in my calculator. And then I hit equals and I find out that that length was about 29.02. And it looks quite a bit longer, 29.02. Um, one of the shortcuts that I learned and where I'll finish is if you want to learn a shortcut. If x is in the numerator when you're solving a trig problem, you just simply always multiply the value and the ratio together. If x is in the denominator, as it is in this case, you always divide them. You take the, the value and divide it by the ratio. It will work for you every time. Good luck with trig.